yo yo guys what's good what is happening everybody i hope everyone is doing well today on this sunday evening now the reason i'm doing this video right now for you guys is because i won't be able to get the 10 o'clock video done for you i've got some things that need to get sorted out and i will however be declaring the psychological levels in the discord so if you are new to the channel be sure to head over to the discord and i'll be revealing the psychological levels for you now if you are new to the channel welcome to a trader's reality my name is tino let's have a conversation guys now bitcoin cryptocurrency nfts what's going on all right see with this channel ladies and gentlemen we tend to talk well how can i put it to you we don't really follow conventional wisdom and practice when it comes to trading see we understand that there's something behind the scenes of how price really moves and to introduce to you the concepts that we discussed the first thing that we understand is when price is rising it's not because the buyers are in control that's how you encourage people to get committed you know in order for you to buy someone needs to be there to sell you wouldn't go into a shop that's empty and demand everything inside that shop to be purchased now would you no because they wouldn't have anything to sell Man, that was a bit of a hiccup well i guess it wouldn't be a trader's reality without a boomer moment yeah <laughs> let's get back to the program so guys the weekend has come bitcoin made its nice move to the upside as you can see right here and that was when it broke the 200 ema on the 50 sorry on the one hour time frame all right now look at what's happened here guys here's something about conventional wisdom of trading a lot of people got caught out trading this death cross that happened on the one hour time frame all right it's great because when you look at it all right we can clearly see a pattern okay so we understand that a W formation, which is the number one pattern that we always like to keep an eye out for in the in the streams. When a W formation appears, it's a psychological movement. OK, in order for the retail trader to think that his price is going lower, the market maker steps in and sends price down. You can see how they got really treacherous in this zone. They were spiking up and down because there were people committing money in this zone. There were retail traders that were going short on this zone now price makes a move back to the 50 ema in order for you to understand why it moves back into the moving averages check out a concept called mean reversion I spoke about it last week just google mean reversion and you'll understand what mean reversion is okay and it's on the principle that price needs to come back into the norm you know the median the average all right now market makers bring price back into the norm because they want to induce retail traders again because when you think about it look at it like this if market makers have been pushing price down lower people are going short well now that they've marked price back up okay they've put it at a reset what are they going to make the retail trader do here are they going to make them believe it's going to continue higher so they're getting the commitment from the guys who want to go long at the same time the retail traders that got squashed out on this move to the downside because their stops got hit on the way back up okay they feel like is this an opportunity for them to re-enter again so then the market maker drops price okay as he's dropping price, everyone is seeing the key moving average of the 50 crossing over the 200 EMA on the one hour time frame. You don't think there are traders out there that are scouring for golden and death crosses. Of course they are. So the market maker gives the trader that belief that that is going to happen. Okay. Then what happens? Price drops lower. It spikes lower and solidifies the commitment of the retail trader and makes him believe that he's got commitment to the downside. At the same time, the market maker's thinking you poor unfortunate souls you guys are supplying me the liquidity that i need to build my longs at lower prices so at this point right now the retail trader is committed to price going to the downside because he's read his books of amazon that have said when the moving averages cross you go short or you go long and that's what happened here now look at the aggressive movement away from the zone market makers stepping in one two three pushes out of the zone the retail trader that went short in this zone is now getting stopped out. The market maker can only release profit on his positions if he's got liquidity on the other side of the previous move. Think about it. When price is dropping, retail traders going short. The market maker's going long. At what point does he realize a profit? 
So what he does is he stabilizes price, spikes up, comes back down again to install the concept and belief that it is finding weakness in this zone and price goes lower. But then he decides to stop. Now we understand that in this session right here, which is the UK Brinks box, okay, we know that these are going to be setting up a couple of moves. Those moves are at either a stop hunt rise or a stop hunt low. So here's an example. A stop hunt rise is this. Price is moving in a orderly fashion like this, for example. And then the market maker decides to initiate a stop hunt rise. So he takes orders and stops and rises price and then he drops. At the same time, he's also inducing a stop hunt low. So price is even moving up, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then he goes for the stops. He sends price down lower and then he reverses back up. OK, that will be a stop hunt low. So stop hunt rise, drop stop hunt low rise okay and this is what happened in this session right here with the uk brinks box the brinks boxes are effectively the setups for the intention for the rest of the session that's what we need to understand about it it's a setup zone now what direction it takes is all going to be down to what our understanding of the of the hybrid system is and what confluence is coming to play you can see there's a little mini w formation on the 5 ema price comes up goes above the 5 and the 13 EMA. The 13 EMA is showing traction towards the upside. We need it to close above the 50 EMA. All right. And it does just that. Price is above the 50 EMA. It's above the 200 EMA and the 5 and the 13. Happy days. Momentum is favoring higher prices. You would initially have gone long in this zone. Okay. Now, in relation to the moving averages that I just spoke a moment ago, retail trader gets caught in the death cross right here. His commitment to the funds in this area right here is quite evident because look at this big candle here, right? Um, big candle right here, sorry. It's spiking lower. Then it reverses back up. And the only reason it reverses back up because the market maker is tapping the liquidity from the guys who went short here. Remember, he can only open his positions if there is liquidity that he's able to exploit and release. Because all the positions here, like stops and liquidation points, it's margin trapped by the brokers, which can only effectively be released if price goes against that zone. OK, that's all you're looking for, ladies and gentlemen. You're looking for the traps and then you're looking for the follow throughs and you're looking for the zones in the chart where the market maker is trapping liquidity, keeping retail traders committed. And then he knows that he can see their stops in this area and then he has to move price in a manner which is then going to be able to move price higher and induce traders to quickly close their positions or should we say run for cover and then try and go along with the direction. OK. But look here, you've got a death cross and you've got a golden cross. It's likely that the retail trader is getting pretty thrown about, you know, it's thrown away with what direction is price going to take. Yeah. So looking at things across the board as well, you can see Bitcoin comes away from this W formation. We understand this to be a bit of a rise level. So it's a small consolidation, but it's all we have. Price goes up again and it forms what we understand to be a potential level two. OK, now, if we are to base this as a valid level two, we kind of need to walk back and say, OK, could it be a level one? Now, the only way it could be a level one is if price holds this zone and continues higher from tonight until tomorrow. The reason why we can assume it's not a level one is because the move from here all the way up didn't really stop. Now, some this is the one thing that's difficult about the hybrid system, establishing the cycle. What is a cycle? Because you can get thrown off. Think about if you see this as a level one and then this goes into a level two. You're expecting one more move to the side, um, one more move to the upside, right? But if you see this as a rise level one, you are effectively waiting for two more levels to the upside, which could take Bitcoin all the way up to the previous pool of liquidity at 53. So in retrospect, you can consider the following. You can say to yourself, OK, I'll tell you what, because this didn't come back down to the 50 EMA completely, Yes, it did hold on the um, the 50, the 5 EMA, sorry, the 5 EMA and the 13 EMA, and it was deemed as a continuation. I will accept that this now could be level one. If this zone holds as level one, OK, price will initially continue to move higher. All right. 
we've got this pool of liquidity. Look, price has come back down and tapped this pool of liquidity right here. Okay, notable volume appearing, just breaking through the 50 EMA, but price has then come back up again. Is this the opportunity for the market maker to open longs and move higher? Who knows? But by principle, we understand that they build their longs by dropping price. So this could be the assumption. Okay. Now, let's make the assumption, okay, that if they do want to go higher, we need to break above at least the four. We need to break 50 before anything else. And we need to see a big, strong break in volume, or should I say notable candle at the 50 zone to really make that conviction. But it's the weekend, guys. We could be going into a false move tomorrow. So Monday might see a spike up in price and then drop down and recover this pool of liquidity and this zone down here. Remember, Bitcoin is still stuck in this boring range, guys. It's still come back down into that zone. Okay. Now it's coming back up a little bit, but it's not really making big moves to the upside. I want to see these moves continue. Okay. Let's have a look at Ethereum. <clears throat> right ethereum itself all right is showing some interesting behavior it has broken the 50 and the 200 ema and what's more important is the fact that they've stabilized but recovered some of the vector candles in this zone and they've tapped this pool of liquidity as well all right so if they continue to send price down lower the absolute low that i would expect them to go to is in and around this zone right here all right it is monday tomorrow so that could make things a bit more interesting all right i'm expecting this pattern like behavior which we are sort of in right now with because i'm not make the patterns perfect but the general consensus consensus is to pull back from this zone which has happened all right likewise do we think that they're gonna we're gonna be seeing we're gonna be seeing higher um, price action by ethereum well, if this is the rise level one and this is the retrace, price is by principle allowed to come all the way down to this zone right here and pull away, it will still be deemed as a level one. Okay? So if it stays in this area and continues higher, wonderful. If it doesn't, you're going to want to wait for the 50 EMA to cross over the 200 EMA on the one hour for you to determine a bigger momentum development to the downside. All right. At the same token, the 13 EMA has crossed over the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame. Go and watch the last couple of streams. And there is a video in the channel which it talks about how to trade with the 5 and the 13 EMA. Go and watch that video because it will help you understand how you can find momentum based off the 5 and the 13 EMA and their importance with this strategy. OK, now looking at cryptocurrency across the board, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the winners, OK, still the alts. All right. And I've said to you in the past couple of streams, pay attention to the coins that are holding and gaining whilst the majors are dropping, because when the majors start moving up again, you're going to see these guys explode. All right. So looking at alpha, look at that. That is unbelievable. Price above the 5 and the 13 EMA. Expanding. It's moving higher. Unbelievable. What? 140. That would be so good. Banda's been doing well. Well, there you go. Green vector candle. Okay. Moving higher. Reef. Coming back to the 5 and the 13 EMA. Very interesting behavior there. Um, Ada doing fantastic to hold its gains come back to the 50 ema now rising up retrace let's see if it's going to continue with that movement to the upside there is this vector zone as well all right but they haven't taken any vectors lately it's quite interesting that they don't seem like they want to be coming back just yet um what else have we got let's have a look at matic yeah, Matic looks like it's forming an M formation, but you've got red vector candles up here. So if they're going to recover price back up into this zone, all right, you want to make sure that they break through with notable volume because they could be forming another fake out move to the upside. So they could do a stop hunt rise and then drop again. Okay. Now, let's have a look at XRP. Where's XRP? Where is XRP? I'll go for once is pulling back. There's XRP. 
Okay, so XRP has now come down into that pool of liquidity right there. Fair game, but they're holding now. And look, previous pool of liquidity right here. Let me get rid of that. Move this across. And you've got this zone right here. So these little zones in price, guys, all right, they are important because it's where they finished accumulating or they came from, should we say. So if it closed down there, but this candlestick is made up of orders that the market maker has built, right? He builds orders across all candlesticks, but this is an important candle zone, okay? So we've had three hits down to the low. This big blue stopping volume candle comes down. They tap the liquidity in this zone right here. Get the liquidity from the retail trader who went long. Use his stops and his liquidation points to offload his shorts and build longs at the same time. Okay, because they do that. Now, what is actually triggering movement in cryptocurrency as a whole? As a whole? Well, Newscraft. Crypto newscraft. News crypto craft. Jesus, what's going on? Anyway, so looking at these articles right here, they're designed to trigger people's attention. All right. Okay, it's for the crypto world, the Persian infrastructure, um, package brings political awakening. Okay, so that's alarming. Or should we say a warning to the politics? they don't understand what they're getting involved in all right you've got nft okay nft the general consensus guys is nfts nfts look like they're going to be the reason why we're going to see a nice move or a continued move of ethereum and bitcoin okay everyone's going crazy on nfts this platform, CryptoCraft, is designed to just release information that is taken from various platforms across the world. So CNN, Markets Business Insider, Block Crypto, Decrypt, CNBC, right, Bitcoin Magazine. They take all those articles and they put them all into this space. So it's for easy access as such. But be careful when you're watching this sort of information. All right, here we go. Wall Street Charity Bike Ride draws a bigger crypto crowd this year. There you go. Wall Street cryptocurrency. It's it's all starting to fall into place. All right. What you want to do with this information, guys, is understand that people are coming to the charts and they're making decisions based on this sentiment. Because if everyone's speaking positively about Bitcoin or if anything about cryptocurrency, people will just say, you know what, I'm just going to go and buy some crypto or I'm just going to start trading crypto. This is the marketing tool. All right. Now you can think and say whatever you want about it. Some of the information is good. Some of the information is bad. All right. Don't come here and read the positive notes and deem that as your valid research. If you're not researching the right thing. Doesn't mean that when you come here and you can see everyone's talking positively about cryptocurrency, you're going to then take that information and just go and place trades off this information. Dive into more of what you're doing. If you're just exclusively trading and not caring about information, fine. Stay at the charts. All right. But if you're going to be doing in between the two, okay, you want to make sure that you want to see the correlation between the news that has been released and look at how price is behaving because nine times out of 10, price would move before the news releases. And then afterwards, the news is once the news is released, price would have effectively be set up already for the market makers to realize a return because people are going to be responsive to that information and they're going to come straight to the charts and they're going to put their monies down thinking that the information they have just read has solidified in their mind that the bias to price should go higher because people are talking positively about it. That's not how it works, guys. That's how they bring you into the game. Remember, you are dealing with the hardest, easiest way to make money. Already, instant wealth creation can be achieved with this business, okay? But how much is it going to cost you to get there? See, people don't look at it like that. The gambler will tell you how much he can win, but the trader will tell you how much he can lose. Who's your money on? All right, I will get the psychological levels over to you. They should be over in the next two hours because on MT4 we will see the market maker's intention. 
Now, what's really good, guys, is, is if you have last week's psychological levels, so you can see Bitcoin's was 47,400 and 46,480, okay, then you're effectively waiting to see what are the chances of them actually keeping the psychological ranges close to last week's behavior because then you could see a potential correlation so if i do that now and mark off the psychological zones in price from last week if let me get rid of this if they come in close that would be consistent with their range so then if they do come down into this area right here, we would understand that if the psychological high for Bitcoin tonight comes in at, say, for example, this is the high and this is the low, for example. All right. And we are so close to last week's psychological high and low. We can understand that when they came back into this zone, OK, they were they held the psychological high, pulled back and then they broke straight through it. So by that principle, okay, what you need to do is you need to say to yourself, okay, if they bring price back down to this zone, which was last week's psychological high, okay, what are the chances of them, of them actually showing support? So it's like adding another bit of confluence, okay? So, as always, if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Now, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, the concepts that I discuss in this channel, all right, they're going to challenge a lot of conventional wisdom in trading. Now, you know what? No one's right and no one's wrong. That's the basis of it all. You're going to get people that favor one thing. You're going to get other people favoring something else. All right. Remember, the marketplace itself, all right is an area where people's opinions, values, idea, culture, you name it, is being put in a point in the chart, all right? If they favor lower prices or people think that price should drop, market maker will initiate liquidity to fulfill that obligation, all right? If you think it's going to rise, market maker will make traders believe it's going to rise, all right? You're dealing with uncertainty, guys. And my time in the markets as well, I've seen a lot of things. And I'm still young in the game, man. I'm only doing it, what, 11 years? All right? Not long. You take the guys who've been in the game 30 plus 40 years, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. They've come to understand that they can never know what's going to happen next, and they're okay with that. This is the nature of the game. It's the hunt. Yes, we look for patterns. Yes, we see them happening over and over again, but we don't know when. And that when is what brings traders to the chart. Because all they're trying to do is they're trying to replicate previous patterns that they made money from and see if they can catch them again and again and again. Three things that the hybrid system is based on. Timing, repeatable patterns, and notable volume candlesticks. All right? When we have these three aspects combined, it's going to change your understanding of the way the market works. All right. If you're able to take those three concepts of the hybrid and apply them optimally, naturally your trading will improve because you've got structure. Some people just come to, the, I mean, look, look, look what I did here with the news from CryptoCraft. There are traders out there that will just look at what's being spoken about, try and fulfill in their mind that price is likely to go higher because of what they're talking, crypt, what they're talking about with crypto. And then they'll just come to the chart, quickly place an order and hope for the best. All right. So that's the basis of it. So moving forward. Do your due diligence, guys. You're committing hard-earned money. Whether it's hard-earned or not. Whether you think you can afford to lose it or not. You're in the hardest, easiest way to make money. This is the industry. And I say it again. It's in the adoptive stages. Go have yourselves a wonderful evening, guys. 
Make sure you join the Discord because that's where I'll be putting the psychological levels for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. All right. Mad love and respect to all of you guys. Take care yourselves. Peace.